It has gates that swivel to keep out exceptionally high tide to protect the city. Singapore's barrage engineers will also design gates that can swivel. Their gates will not only work as floodgates to keep floodwaters out, they'll also keep fresh water in to create a massive reservoir. Confident of their plan, engineers begin construction. Installing the giant gates is a precision job. There is no margin for error. Senior engineer Su Pei Lin is on hand to tackle any problems that arise. The tensest experience was when we installed the first crest gate, which actually took us uh, 16 hours. Most of the time was spent trying to insert the pivot pins into its position. That took about probably 10 hours and we thought uh, we'll never get it done actually. After weeks of painstaking labour, all nine gates are finally installed. Engineers win this battle. But the war rages on. Their next plan, to build a giant recycling plant that will turn all of Singapore's raw sewage into fresh water. To supply the plant, they will need to build the mother of all sewage tunnels. That crucial supply line is the DTSS, the Deep Tunnel Sewage System. Tunneling 48 kilometers across the island is hard enough. But this tunnel goes deeper than anyone has ever been in Singapore. The immense pressure exerted by 50 meters of earth overhead is a constant menace. The main concern in all underground jobs is the soil condition, what you're going to go through. You would have problems with caving in if the tunnel was not supported. Such dangerous work calls for a super tough and super smart machine. This is it, the Earth Pressure Balance Tunnel Boring Machine. A fancy name for a monster digger whose steel teeth slice through the earth like a hot knife through butter. The front of the machine will bore the tunnel and right behind that segmental rings are erected so you never have an exposed surface. Inside the belly of the advancing beast, workers seal the tunnel walls. They bolt together precast concrete segments then coat them with a fast-setting concrete. Kilometer by kilometer, the tunnel soon resembles an impenetrable underground fortress. After eight years of grueling work, the finish line is in sight. A thin layer of rock is all that separates them from success, if their calculations are correct. the shaft, waiting for it to come, and we're like, is that it, is that it? We see a piece of rock coming down. It was great relief when the final tunnel day lighted. Everyone was just so happy when it happened at the correct location. With the deep tunnel sewage system completed, the treatment plant starts to extract water from more than 600 million litres of raw sewage a day. Here we are. Engineer Yang Ju Chai oversees this incredible process. Welcome to the deepest point in Singapore. We are right at the ground level. In fact, we are going down all the way up to the basement floor level, which is almost 52 metres deep. Beneath this basement floor, the recycling begins by separating raw sewage into solids and liquids. These massive pumps then transport the liquid waste 
into a settlement tank. We have five uh, giant pumps here. All of them are operational. The water actually comes to the bottom of this basement in a big pipe manifold. So the pumps will suck up the water from the big pipe manifold, come all the way 60 meters up uh, to be sent to the treatment plant for treatment. Most of the remaining solids settle in the tank. There, they are separated before the liquid goes into the bioreactor. Here, good bacteria, like those in our digestive systems, destroy any toxins. After one more purification stage, the water is safe enough for most purposes. It goes through one final filtration to become super clean drinking water. Proud engineers call this new water. As you can see, the water here is very clear and clean, almost pure. And uh, I'll just sweat a little bit so you can see better. Water that started off as recycled water, taken through two stages of water purification. And here we are, new water standard. That's one water solution down and two to go. At the Marina Barrage, engineers aren't celebrating yet. They must solve a tricky design problem on the barrage gates before they can move on. The gates are designed to swivel, flushing excess water from the catchment during storms. But if a severe storm strikes while the tide is high, swiveling the gates will let the sea invade the reservoir contaminating the fresh water in it. Rather than overhaul the gate design, engineers decide to call in some backup. Seven giant vertical pumps, 10 meters tall, the largest of their kind in the world. In one minute, each pump can drain an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of water from the bay. More than enough power to cope with the worst monsoon rain. Engineers waste no time in getting the first pump installed. Fourteen men and a 500-ton crane perform the tricky maneuver hoisting the pump into a pre-cast concrete well. It weighs as much as four double-decker buses, making it extremely tricky to position. Slotting the pump into the well will be a major challenge. There's no room for error. We are talking about uh, in terms of millimeters, so it really has to be very precise. After years of battling the elements, work on the marina barrage is close to completion. Engineers have solved the problem of soft, unstable foundation and building the structure in the open sea. Now they are installing the first of seven pumps to reinforce the barrage's flood prevention capabilities. When the dangerous combination of heavy rain and high tide hits Singapore, the pumps swing into action, discharging excess water, saving the city from calamity. To install each pump, engineers slot it into a precast concrete well. It's no easy task. The pump is almost as heavy as a Boeing 737. And it's a nightmare to maneuver. The most challenging thing today is to be able to hoist the pump exactly into the pump well. 
is like treading a thread through a needle because the positioning has to be very precise. Okay, ready. One wrong move and a two million dollar machine goes down the drain. To the relief of the engineers, the pump finally comes to rest without a scratch in just two hours. The team only gets a short sigh of relief. One down, but there's still six more to go. With the marina barrage moving into its next phase and fresh water already flowing from the sewage treatment plant, engineers now turn their attention to the final battlefront. An ambitious campaign to transform salt water into life-saving fresh water. Once again, cutting-edge science and technology hold the key. They launch a billion-dollar search for the perfect desalination machinery. An army of water experts is hired, led by veteran engineer Yap Keng Guan. One of the things that have made us come as far as we have gone in uh, developing new sources of water is the fact that we invest very heavily on technology. The extensive search throws up an unexpected solution. Reverse osmosis membrane technology. Reverse osmosis membrane technology. It's not new. I mean, the technology has been around for decades. Uh, but it's been used primarily in pharmaceutical industry, in other industries, but not so much in water. Reverse osmosis works through the use of spiral membranes. The membranes are like thin layers of film sandwiched together and rolled into a tube, then placed in a cylinder. The system pumps water through the membrane at extremely high pressure. As the water passes through, the membrane traps impurities larger than the liquid's molecules. Only purified water, 99% clean, comes out the other end. Well, put in a very simple way, if you like look at this whole thing as a very high-tech filter. Engineers believe that this amazing technology can remove all the salt from the sea. It will also rid it of any other contaminants. Singapore takes the plunge and builds Asia's largest reverse osmosis desalination plant. Costing close to $200 million, it's capable of purifying more than 100 million litres of fresh water every day. We decided that that's about the time we wanted to go into desalination in a big way. And of course, people were very sceptical. Would, would this really work? And I think it's proven that this technology does work on a large scale. And I think uh, other countries in the world, Israel and so on, are now moving on to do large-scale desalination using this membrane technology. Singapore's desalinated water is so pure, it surpasses the standards set by the World Health Organization. Marina Bay. This is where engineers are building the Marina Barrage, a dam that will turn the bay into a freshwater reservoir. That's just for starters. The barrage is part of an even grander vision for the bay. This whole area is undergoing an amazing makeover to become home to some of Asia's most vibrant entertainment. In five, seven years, it will take shape. And the new downtown will be around the bay. So we'll have a unique city center. It'll be like Venice with the piazza. Projects include the world's biggest Ferris wheel, called the Singapore Flyer, the $5 billion Marina Bay Sands Resort, and a 101 hectare national garden project called Gardens by the Bay. 
Just one issue. These developments are on opposite sides of the bay. So engineers are building a 300 meter pedestrian bridge across the barrage itself to link them. One last section of the bridge remains to be installed. A section weighing 500 tons. To do the job, engineers call in a 3,200 ton heavyweight. The Asian Hercules II is one of the largest floating cranes in the world. It costs $20,000 an hour to hire. It's taller than London's Big Ben and has enough power to lift 4,000 cars at once. Right. In the driver's seat of this mean machine is Captain Mir Mahmood. To operate this monster is not easy at all. It's just very delicate to handle. If you have a wrong move, we come in contact, might, might cause any damages. It's estimated to be a seven-hour operation. The trickiest bit is keeping the heavy bridge section evenly balanced while they lower it into place. It must fit perfectly into bearings located at each of its four corners. The tidal shifts of the South China Sea make the delicate operation even harder. Success depends on the captain's expert handling of the crane. The pressure is on for the 20-year veteran. One of the criteria is that the clearance on the each, on the east side is only, I think, about 20 mm. So this is one of the most difficult jobs I've encountered. Anchor winches, hoiting winches, get ready. OK, now we go to position. Hoisting the bridge section up from the barge is the easy bit. OK, lower the blocks. Lower blocks, very good. Next, the captain must maneuver his crane close enough to the barrage to deliver its payload. But the low tide is making it impossible for him to do so. Yeah, what's your weight? Oh, no. Captain Mir Mahmood has no choice but to order a halt to the proceedings Stop for a while. and wait for the sea to rise. But in a $20,000 an hour operation, engineers can't afford to wait too long. A multi-billion dollar development is changing the face of Singapore's Marina Bay. It's the government's grand vision to turn Singapore into Asia's entertainment epicenter. The projects that will make that vision a reality? The world's biggest Ferris wheel, called the Singapore Flyer. The $5 billion Marina Bay Sands Resort, containing the world's most expensive casino. And the $1 billion Gardens by the Bay project, boasting 3,000 species of plants and flowers. One project links these developments together, the Marina Barrage. Its main purpose is to dam up the bay to create a freshwater lake. It also connects the south of the bay to its east. Engineers are building a pedestrian bridge for that very purpose. We can carry on the leaf now, watch a load. Captain Mir Mahmood of the floating crane Asian Hercules orders the crew to continue operations. The most challenging part of this operation is to have the bridge segment rest precisely at the same time on the, each of the four bearings so that we do not load any one of the bearings. If we were to load any one of the bearings, we would crush that bearing and the installation will fail. To ensure the bridge will sit accurately on its bearings, engineers must align a set of pre-installed steel bars. After hours of the tricky balancing act, 
the bridge section finally slots into place without a hitch. All right, very good. The bridge is cleared. Another job well done for the captain and his monster crane. As you can see for herself, she landed very beautifully. With the marina barrage complete, the face of Singapore is set to change. The government announces a bold new initiative. They're turning Singapore's water reservoirs into recreational playgrounds. As the next phase of rejuvenating and transforming Singapore, functional canals, drains, rivers and reservoirs will be converted to places of recreation. To be a place where you feel excited about, that you can live and enjoy and be close to nature and be close to water and yet be part of the modern world. I think that's very unique. Besides enjoying the water from their new catchment zone, Singaporeans are also drinking water from a recycling plant. So high-tech, it turns raw sewage into drinking water. Even the sea has become a never-ending well of fresh water, with help from modern technology. Singapore's innovations in water technology have since caught the world's attention. They win the Stockholm Industry Water Award, the most coveted prize in the water industry. Ku Teng Chai finds himself accepting an award that was unthinkable just 40 years ago. I think the water story of Singapore is in many ways, I think, the story of Singapore. We have turned uh, vulnerability, you know, what, what, what was a vulnerability now into a competitive advantage. Water planners are not resting on their laurels, though. 